What's up everyone, it's your boy Noah Red 89 here bringing you another review for the Scooby-Doo review series as now we are on to the 14th incarnation of the television series and that's Velma which premiered in January of this year and we are finally done. It is over, we have talked about, now that we're talking about Velma, we have currently on the channel talked about every Scooby-Doo television show there is out there and there's 10 episodes in this show and this one premiered to very mixed reviews, it's probably the most hated show that came out this year i'm not gonna lie to you but is it that bad is it a total dumpster fire you're gonna find out today or is it just you know really mediocre or is it really good and it's a total gem you're gonna find out my thoughts today so stick around let's do this roll it So Velma premiered on HBO Max this year in January and has 10 episodes and they're about the 24 minute like runtime type episodes and this one completely changes the whole storytelling, the whole mythos, everything. All of it's completely different in terms of the shows. There's a lot of different incarnations of the television shows we've talked about but this is the one that strays the furthest away mainly because of the content that they try to tackle and also the maturity of the way they try to tackle their content and everything and let's just get right into it right now in terms of what I think about this show. So right off the bat I in terms of positive must commend the creators of this one for Velma for at least like you know taking a fucking swing because like I said this this one right here is completely a meta version of the show. It's a dark comedy type version. Think of more of like a drawn together. That's a deep cut. If you've seen that show, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's pretty much the kind of comedy and the writing that you're going to get in this show. Or even South Park. That's another more common show that more people are going to know. South Park and Drawn Together are like the two kind of shows that I would say are in the same realm of the style of content that they try to tell and the jokes they're trying to tell in the comedy. So for me, in terms of my enjoyment, the first three episodes, I was actually really on board. I thought this was a hidden gem. I was like, all right, cool. Let's see where they're going with this one. I was very surprised at some of the stuff they were going with and the routes they were taking and, you know, the, the balls really to do some of the things they did. And I didn't mind Velma being the lead of the show. I didn't mind that Daphne and her like had this tussle and they kind of had almost this relationship thing going on and everything and were butting heads at first and then Fred Jones like he's kind of a weird version of Fred he's definitely an interesting version not the greatest version of Fred but he's definitely not the worst version of Fred I think and me in terms of animation I think the animation is pretty cool in this one it has this really cool kind of grungy gritty kind of look to it even the way normal rogers looks and velma and her reactions and her even her dreams when she's recalling thinking about her mom who's missing you know what i mean who's like used to write these mystery stories for her as a child and that's kind of what inspired her to be you know a detective and everything so i think the animation and all that kind of stuff it really does land for me in certain areas and like I said for the first three episodes i was on board with this show committed and i was like all right let's see where this goes but then we get to episode four and episode five and then it does tail off by the time you get to the 10th episode and let's kind of talk about some of the negatives right now. I think my biggest negative that I have with this show is that it really does go hard with the creators and the writers trying to hammer down their kind of their views, their social commentary and a lot of their meta commentary, it, they double down hard in like, you know, episode seven, eight, nine and 10. It's just really is kind of out there and I'm just like all right you know it's I understand when you're writing a piece and writing a project you want to pour yourself into a project you want to put your yourself on a page for people to read about you know what I mean but sometimes the way it comes across it just comes across very you know just brash and very rude and stuff instead of being you know something you're just trying to tell us or a storytelling or making us interested in the characters I end up getting turned off by a lot of the characters towards the end of the show, but I was having fun at the beginning. Like I said, Velma and Daphne, I didn't mind that they were having this tussle. They were feuding with each other. Then they had like kind of this flirtatious thing going on. I was all for that. I mean, come on, Daphne and Velma, like you can't tell me there's not a lot of people out there that haven't thought about that kind of hookup and, you know, in their mind before. Come on now. But still, to say that the least, it just, they really took it into a deep, awful route after that because like a lot of the side plots a lot of the 
stuff that's going on with, you know, Velma's mom, Fred being attracted to Daphne and then being attracted to Velma. There's so much that happens and the side plots that they all kind of get jumbled together. And then by the time you get to episode nine and ten, it's kind of like a rush game to, you know, complete the whole thing, you know, to wrap up the storylines or to set up season two, because we are going to be getting a season two. They got confirmed. So Velma also does, like I said, follow the the storyline of or the style of being kind of like 13 Ghosts Scooby-Doo, where it's a continuous storyline throughout. Another huge negative is going to be, this might be a minor spoiler, so just in case you are considering watching this show, I know there's not a lot of people out there that are considering watching this, so I know you don't mind, but just in case, spoiler warning will be up here, there is no Scooby-Doo in this season, so this is the first ever, ever scooby -Doo. in the ever 14 seasons incarnations this is the first time they've ever decided to not include scooby-doo into the show so yes for me that is a huge negative a huge crime scooby-doo has gotten on my nerves a couple times there's been some versions of scooby-doo but you cannot just not have him like you have to have the character it's just such a shame it's just that is really just a crime against the franchise or the, the show in general to not have that character in it so that's another huge negative with this version of the show so yeah for me in my book Velma is one that it did have potential I probably will watch season two to be honest because I'm such a Scooby-Doo fanatic I freaking love Scooby-Doo everything Scooby-Doo and I want to digest the content that's how I am like when I commit and I love something like I love the Friday the 13th franchise I love the Halloween franchise I'm going to go out and watch every movie every TV show and see what kind of content comes out even fan films I've watched just about every Jason Friday the 13th fan film there is out there so of course Velma season 2 when that drops I'll be watching it and finding out where they take this storyline like I said this wasn't you're, it, I, you know, when we come down to the ranking, you're going to have to see where this one lands and stuff like that. You you might be surprised where it is on the list. You know, you might never know. But yeah, Velma's one that isn't, it definitely isn't one of the best. Like this wasn't one that I'd be like, oh, one of my first recommendations to a fan or to people who don't watch Scooby-Doo. Like you got to check out Velma. Like, no, this isn't going to be one of my first recommendations. But this definitely to me, in my opinion, isn't the complete awful dumpster fire that everybody says it is, you know what I mean? This is one of those TV shows that had a lot of potential, but I think the creators and the writers, they kind of jumbled the execution of it. They lost their way towards the end of the storyline. So I do kind of, like I said, I'm interested, intrigued, and want to find out what they're going to do with season two, where they're going to take us, because I'm pretty sure that's going to be the last season. I don't think they're going to get a season three unless they completely surprise us and they, you know, bring out the works and like people are completely hooked in season two. We'll find out. But these are just my thoughts, my opinions, everybody on the new show Velma that just came out this year. Please, if you were one of the people like me, I know there's not that many people out there that committed and watched every episode of Velma. Let me know down below. And even if you didn't and you only tapped out or you haven't seen the show, are you considering watching it? I would love to hear from all of you down below so we can discuss and be sure to like this video. That greatly helps out the channel. Also subscribe to the channel if you're new and share these videos too. I always forget to say that. Share these videos out because that also helps out. It's fantastic. If you enjoy what you're watching, share it with other people. That's the best thing, you know what I mean? But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.